Hello, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm shooting this video for the UMA Undergraduate Social Networks course. I'm looking at week six right here, as you can see uh, in our course syllabus, in which I am asking you for homework number six to actually start to look at real-world network data. This is where the rubber hits the road, and this is a point in history where, thanks to the Internet and the advancement of computer technology, some of which you are using, uh, some capabilities that were five years ago, ten years ago, only available to a handful of people who had a lot of money or a lot of government resources behind them, they're available to you on your home computer. They're available to you in a student lab. And who knows where we'll be in, in five years in terms of your capability to analyze this data. Right now, there's a surprising amount that you can do. What I want you to do for this piece of homework is to look at actual committee structure of the United States House of Representatives. Uh, in the 113th Congress, which is the Congress that is meeting right now, this year, it started just as you started class in January 2013. So, uh, if you click at that web page for the United States House of Representatives, you'll be taken to a web page that lists a number of committees. I want you to pick an entire committee. Click on one of those links. Don't just pick a subcommittee. Uh, I want you to actually pick a main committee. For instance, the Agriculture Committee, not the Nutrition and Horticulture Subcommittee of the Agriculture Committee, the entire committee. And I want you to find for each of five committees for the 113th Congress, complete membership information. For the committees, these are typically listed under a tab that reads About on the main committee web page and you're looking for a list of members. I want you to pick committees that you might be interested in because this is a chance for you to actually look at the real world around you and, and see what's going on. Uh, get membership from each of these five committees, and then I want you to put that membership information in the classic two-mode matrix form. Uh, and there are some limitations to that two-mode matrix form. Each member of the United States House of Representatives, no matter how many committees they're on, should only be represented by one row, and each committee should only be represented by one column. You'll want to have a zero indicating that a member of the House is not a member of a particular committee, and a one to indicate that they are a particular member of the committee. Then I'm going to want you to convert that two-mode network data into two one-mode network data, uh, one, uh, uh, one mo uh, mode uh, uh, matrices, excuse me, two of those one-mode uh, matrices, uh, a persons-by-persons -persons matrix, which is to say talking about the relationship between members of the House, and then a committee-by-committee -committee, uh, matrix, which is depicting a network of relations between committees in the United States House of Representatives. These are both possible, and these are both referenced in the lecture for week six. So in the lecture for week six, we talk about the command to do that, which is in UCINet, data affiliations, um, and you should be able to do that uh, especially after you look at this walkthrough video in which I'm going to demonstrate these steps. Then I'm going to ask you to use NetDraw to create sociograms to depict the persons by persons committee, uh, persons by persons matrix, excuse me, and the committee by committee matrix. And I would like you to use some uh, commands to represent the strength of the ties between the representatives or the strength of the ties between committees, because there will be varying strength of tie. Then I want you to put that all in a word processing document. You can see we're building on some of the skills that you had before in, in previous weeks, and we're adding new skills alongside. So some of these things that you did a few weeks ago that may have seemed trivial to you um, should now really start to become useful to you, I hope. Let's uh, get started.
Now for my example, I'm going to work through just four committees. Why? Because I want to show you a screen capture of everything I'm doing and I could only fit four committees on there, but you make sure you do five committees, okay? Um, I'm going to go to a very handy program, one which you should have access to because of course you need to use the whole Microsoft Office um, suite. You need to have it installed in order to run a program we'll be using later called Node Excel. So you should have access to it. If you don't have access to it on your own computer, you definitely have access to it on UMA's uh, 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 computers in the student labs in just about any center. So what I'm looking at here in this uh, screen is a list of members of the Agriculture Committee. And what I've done in this spreadsheet is I've created in the first row a list of three names. They're titles. They're describing what follows below. The, the first column is first name, the second column is last name, and the existence of a one indicates that yes, they're on the Agriculture Committee. For the first committee, this is pretty obvious. What I, what I did, it should be, is that I went to the list of members and I typed them in, first name, last name, first name, last name, first name, last name, first name, last name. And for each member that was listed there, how, how low does it go? It goes all the way down to 47. So yes, this will take a few minutes for you to type in for each committee. And then I listed a one under agriculture, uh, which is a variable, here that it has only ones, but it, 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 you'll see that it varies later, uh, indicating that yes, these are members. Okay, that's great. You could do this for each of your five committees. I picked four committees, as I said, so I could fit them all on screen. Um, what I did after I typed all of these members in was I wanted to uh, not just have them listed in this random order, which is Colin Peterson is line two, Bob Goodlatt is in line three, Steve King is in line four, who knows why. I wanted to be able to find members very quickly, so I selected all three columns, and then I went up to the Data tab, and I hit Sort, and I can sort now by last name. Very handy it puts all these members in alphabetical order. It's important that you select all the columns so that uh, all the first names stay with the last names, uh, like Cheryl stays with Bustos and Jim stays with Costa. These are two members of Congress. And that's how I got this result here. Well, that's not all I wanted to do. That's the first step. The second step is to go and collect similar information for other committees. And I've done that here. Uh, in the first three, let me list these here in bold. For the first three committees, the result should look pretty familiar. It's in alphabetical order, which is really handy. Okay. But then I went out and I collected information on the Ethics Committee, which is a short list, the Rules Committee, which is a short list, and the Natural Resources Committee, which is a bit of a long list. It might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but it's good for you to have some long list names because there aren't, there's not going to be too much overlap with short committee lists. So do take the time to find some committees that have a lot of members. For each of these three committees, the Ethics Committee, the Rules Committee, and the Natural Resources Committee, I just wrote down all the lists of names. What am I going to do next? Well, I'm going to select those columns, and I'm going to sort those columns and only those columns, again, by last name and again by last name, and again by last name. Why am I doing this? For a very practical reason. I'm trying to construct a matrix here, and I'm trying to do it in a way that is easy, and I find this easy, so I'm giving you some advice. Uh, now what can I do here? Well, I can go and I can take a look. Okay, I believe this, yeah. This is the right uh, tab for me to work on. I can look at this first name, Susan Brooks. I know she's on the Ethics Committee, but is she on the Agriculture Committee? Uh, I know, and I can look very quickly because 
the Agriculture Committee is also listed in alphabetical order. Is Brooks there? No. Is Capuano there? No. Is Yvette Clark there? No. What about Michael Conaway? Ooh, interesting. I wrote him down as K. Michael here and Michael here, but I know that that's the same Michael Conaway. So what can I do? I can start a new tab here for the Ethics Committee, and I know I can put in Michael Conaway over there as having been in the, both the Agriculture and the Ethics Committee. I'm making sure that Michael Conaway has only one row. Now I can move on. What about Charles Dent? What about Ted Deutsch? Trey Gowdy? No. Patrick Meehan? No. Pedro Perluisi? No. And what about Linda Sanchez? No. Oh, well, now what can I do with these individuals? Well, I'm going to do something special. I'm going to take these names, I'm going to select them with my uh, left uh, button, since I'm using a Windows machine, and then I'm dragging to select, then I'm hitting Control C for copy, I'm heading down to the bottom, and I'm adding them to the bottom of the agriculture list. And then what do I do? So there are their names. Now what am I going to do? Remember I added in a special column here, column D, that is for ethics committee members. And I know that if I go to the bottom of the alphabet here and then I start over again, that these are the people who are on the ethics committee. Now I can take all of those individuals. I can get all the information about people who are in both agriculture and ethics. And I can sort again by last name. And now they've become integrated in that alphabetical list. And I have some blanks. Don't worry, we'll fill them. And I have some ones. And there's only one individual, K. Michael Conaway, who is in both. I now can delete this ethics set of uh, columns because that information is already included over on the left-hand side. I'm going to do the same thing with the Rules Committee. Huh, Rob Bishop and Michael Burgess. No, nope, they're not on Agriculture or Ethics. I know because I can look over at the uh, Agriculture Ethics list now and they're not on it. Uh, Tom Cole, Virginia Fox. No, isn't it odd that there are so many who aren't on there? No, actually not at all because while the, the list on the left is down to 55 members, 56 minus 1 for the the first row, there are actually 435 members of Congress of the U.S. House of Representatives. Okay, so let's keep looking. What about Al C. Hastings? No. James McGovern? Aha! James McGovern? Yes. And what am I going to do? I'm going to start a new column here called Rules, and I'm going to delete James McGovern's name here because I already know that I have him here as a 1 for Rules. Richard Nugent, Jared Polis? No. Uh, Ileana Rose Lettinen and Pete Sessions? Rose Lettinen and Pete Sessions? No. Uh, Louise Slaughter, Daniel Webster, and Rob Wood Woodall. Slaughter, Webster, and Woodall. Slaughter, no. Webster and Woodall, no. What can I do now? I can select their names from the Rules Committee list. I, I select with holding down the left button and then dragging, then hitting Control-C. I can then head all the way down to the bottom of this list and hit Control V to paste. And now, which is my rules column? It's E. So I know that when I get to the end of the alphabet and then start new, that I have some people who are on the rules committee. I have this odd row here, but don't worry, it gets sorted out. Because blanks get sorted down to the bottom when I now select all these five columns and I sort it alphabetically again. And now I have those people integrated in to the committee. It's really cool. Okay, and I can delete these columns and now I have the last one which is natural resources. This is going to take me a little bit longer. Uh, and insert a column. But let's start with Dan Beneshek. Because I know he, but not Mark Am Amodai. I don't know actually how to pronounce his last name. So I apologize, Mark, if I just butchered your name. What about Rob Bishop? Yeah, he's there. Uh, Madeline Bort So I'll delete Rob Bishop. And I put him over here. 
uh, under natural resources under column F. What about Paul Brown, uh, Cardenas, Cartwright, Costa? Costa is there. So take care of Costa. What about Kramer? Uh, Kramer? No. Danes, DeFazio, and Duncan. Danes, DeFazio, and Duncan. Nope. Faluma Vega. Here. Fleming and Flores. Faluma Vega, Fleming and Flores. No. Garcia, Gomert, and Gosar. Garcia, Gomert, and Gosar. No. Grijalva. No. Hanabusa Hastings. Hastings. Yes, there's a Hastings, but look, that's Doc Hastings, who is a different person than L.C. Hastings. Very different. Uh, if you look them both up. Uh, Rush Holt, Horsford, Huffman. Okay, now we go on to Labrador. Lamolfa. Ah, Doug Lamolfa. He's there. I'll delete him from my list that's just for natural resources and put him down as a one here. So we had Lamolfa, Lamborn, Lowenthal, Lummis, no, Markey, McClintock, Mullen, Napolitano, no, Pallone, Pierre Luisi, yes, Pedro Pierre Luisi, who is the uh, delegate from Puerto Rico, uh, Raul Ruiz, John Runyon, Gregorio Sablan, no, Shea Porter, no, Steve Sutherland, yes. And so I'm putting a one next to his name in column F. Column F is for natural resources. What about Chris Stewart, Glenn Thompson? No, Glenn Thompson, yes delete him over here and I've already written in a one for him down there what about Scott Tipton oh Scott Tipton yes Mr. Pip Tipton yes indeed Nikit Songus Rob Whitman and Don Young no now what can I do I can take the names here that were not already included in the list I'm going to control C to copy head down to the bottom of my list and one final time I'm going to paste now I know that for column F, column F is for natural resources, and when I start at the beginning of the alphabet again, at the bottom of my list, these are people who are in the rules committee. So I'm putting ones down for them. And the result is going to be, whoops, I put in a one where there shouldn't be. We all make mistakes, but you have to look out for them. Okay, the result's going to be, There we go. That then when I select all six of these columns now and I sort them by last name, I have an alphabetical list which contains a set of, if I can delete that now, all ones where a person listed is a member of a committee and blanks otherwise. Of course, we should not have blanks in our matrix we should have zeros. That's what we're going to do next. I'm going to start UCI net. I'm going to select all of these names over here. Okay, a full set of 105 individuals, 106 plus the label row at the top. And I'm going to head over to UCI net. I'm going to start up my spreadsheet editor and I am going to hit edit paste or I could do control V. There they are. Now, this is really important. I'm going to go down and just check. I'm going to say, I'm going to go down to the lower right and I'm going to find out that it's 105 rows and five columns. I want to make sure that I limit the dimensions to that so that now it's a little hard to see on video. I have actually list, uh, limited the number of rows and columns to the actual place where data is. Then I'm going to go up to fill, and I'm going to fill blanks with zeros. Boom. I have a complete two-mode uh, matrix. That is a persons by groups matrix. And it lists with a full set of uh, names uh, and then some committees uh, exactly who is on what okay we have a small problem here which is that we have two label columns and the last names aren't enough because there are a few people such as the Hastings Alcee Hastings and Doc Hastings 
Okay, and are there others? I believe there are. I'm going to look. Yes, David Scott and Austin Scott, who have the same last name. So we can't just delete first names. We have to do something else. You could go back to Microsoft Excel and use a concatenate command. If you know Microsoft Excel, you could do that. To, con to concatenate is to shove two terms together. It would shove the first name and the last name together, making each row unique. Um, the other thing you could do is that you could type in Scott1, Scott D, perhaps, so we know that that's Scott David, and Scott A for Austin Scott. We could then go back up to the Hastings with another one. Hastings A for LC Hastings, and Hastings D for Doc. Now, we don't want to have two rows of labels, so I'm going to take the first name. I'm going to select one of the cells from that column, and then I'm going to hit Edit, Delete Column. And there we are. I'm going to save this in my special folder. And I'm going to save that as 113 committee. Four committees. Committees X4. So I know that that is four committees from the 113th Congress. Save it right there. And now I'm ready to create some one mode matrices. How do I do that? I'm exiting to the main UCI Net program. I'm heading over to the data tab, and I'm selecting under that affiliations, two mode to one node mode. That's a pretty good reminder in if you ever need it about how to work with that. Now I'm going to select my one hundred and thirteen committees x four matrix and that's my input data set i hit the the three dots to browse my files to find it and then it's going to output a data set and it's going to output it rows by rows the rows are people so it will be a people by people matrix and that will be in the same folder that I was working with. This is good. Uh, it, you know, it's always good to remember where these things are headed, so we can look at them later. Looking at them is going to be interesting because remember, this is 105 columns. Oh, it's going to be big. Watch what happens when I hit OK. Oh my gosh! Look at that. What is that? Oh my gosh! It's hugely overlapping. Even if I maximize this, it's so many different columns that 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 it it it, it hits the side of the screen and has to start over again. It's almost illegible in this log format. Fortunately, what can I do? I can look up 113 committees x4 dash rows, and I can look at it in my original spreadsheet editor. I'm going to do that. Hundred and thirteen committees x4 rows, and now this look makes sense. Dan Beneshek is in He's in two committees shared with Dan Beneshek. Okay, he shares two with himself, but he also shares two with, look here, with Jim Costa. Uh, we also know that, uh, conversely, Jim Costa shares two with Dan Beneshek. Uh, we also know that Peter DeFazio shares one committee with Paul Brown and so on and so forth. You could take a look and find uh, similar information throughout this matrix and it goes on and on all of a sudden you have a picture of the patterns of people who bump into each other in their daily business in the united states congress can you use this to predict how the congress works yes you can there are people who have and we'll be taking a look at that later in the semester okay right now we're going to do one more thing we're going to go back to data affiliations that was a persons by persons um, network that we got out of it and look at the lecture to find out why that matters. Look at the part regarding Breiger. One moment. Okay. It's time for me to go. Life calls. But I'm going to take a look at 113 committees X4 again. This time I'm going to select column 
uh, the mode for columns to compare committees. I want to get a committee by committee structure. How many people are shared by two committees? That's a tie between committees. And this is a much simpler result. Now, the labels are a little bit uh, compressed, but you can see there are 46 members of the Agriculture Committee. But of those 46 members, six of them are also members of the Natural Resources Committee. One is a member of the Ethics Committee as well, and one is a member of the Rules Committee. There are no members of the Ethics and Rules Committee, zero, that are overlap. Um, this is talking about how many people two committees hold jointly, how tightly we might expect them, therefore, to work together. You should be able to then use these committees and head to UCINet, and I expect you to try to follow... Uh, the instructions that I listed there and play with the options for visualizing tie strength which we cover in the lecture to depict relationships between the committees because as you can see the only interesting structure here if we don't include tie strength is uh, the information that there's no tie between ethics and rules. We know there are connections between natural resources and rules, and rules and agriculture, and natural resources and agriculture, but what we don't know is how strong those are by looking at this sociogram. I want you, uh, by using the properties, lines, size, tie strength command, properties, lines, size, tie strength command, to play with these options that you see in front of you, uh, to use uh, information about the relation to create something interesting okay, uh, regarding oh, a particularly strong tie. Another option for you is to turn link wait waiting on. And now you have information that shows some kind of tie strength. Uh, what that actually means is something that you have to figure out. What does the number six mean? There should be a clue for you. Uh, I encourage you to uh, play with this in your work. Think about at every step what you're doing. Make sure that your data is clean and that it actually is measuring what you think it is. Remember, garbage in, garbage out, quality in, quality out. And I really look forward to you sharing with me what you find. Thank you.